Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's talk about the physical graphical representation of a tensor of rank 2. Now a tensor of rank 2 has nine components. In other words, for each direction, the x direction, the y direction, the z direction, there's some phenomenon, some force, some stress, something that needs to be represented in terms of a vector in itself that has three components. And the best way to describe that is to draw the three-dimensional x, y, and z um, volume, so to speak. And then around that cube that you can see at the very center of the cube, we have the origin. We have the x-axis stick sticking out to the right, the y-axis going straight up, and the z-axis coming forward. Now, of course, there's different representations of the x, the y, and the z-axis, and we'll show you the other representations as well. Sometimes you have the x-axis going this way, the y-axis going this way, and the z-axis going this way. And again, we'll be able to represent that as well as a dyad. But let's start with this representation, which is actually quite common. So if you ignore the z-axis, we have the x going to the right, the y going to the top, and then the z coming straight out, which is a very typical representation as well. Now, where the axes penetrate this cube, and this cube, of course, can be of any size, but it's there for to represent something. So let's say that we look along the x-axis, and at that location right there, we want to know what the stress is. And the stress may act in a particular direction. It doesn't have to act directly straight out in the x-direction. It can act in any direction. So how do we represent the magnitude and the direction of the stress at that location? Well, we can do that with a set of three vectors. A vector that points in the x direction, a vector that points in the y direction, and a vector that points in the z direction. Of course, any one of these components could be a negative direction, a negative component, so that in the z direction, maybe it's pointing into the board instead of out of the board. It can be represented any such way. So that means in the x direction, we can have a force or a stress or an elasticity or some crystal structure or something which point in a particular direction, which is represented by these three vectors. If we now go to our, three, our matrix that has nine components, notice that the x direction right here is represented by this, well, set of components of a vector that either point in the x, the y, or the z direction the x, the y, or the z direction. Notice we use sigma and tau. We don't have to do that. We can use any character. But I like to represent it with the sigma along the diagonal because all the sigma components point in the same direction as the axis on which they're on. For example, the sigma xx simply means that we're on the x direction and it's pointing in the x direction. Here we're in the y direction and it's pointing in the y direction. Here we're in the z direction, it's pointing in the z direction. So the diagonal elements simply represent the components of the set of three vectors for each of the three directions that point in the same direction as the axes. That's what we mean by the, by the components along the diagonal. And all the off-diagonal components are the components that point to a different direction than the direction of the axis they're on. For example, we're on the x-axis, in the x direction away from the origin, but we have a component that points in the y direction and a component that points in the z direction, which is this component here and this component there. Here we're on the direction in the, on the y axis right here. We have one component that points in the y direction, which is this component right here, but we have one that points in the x direction and we have one that points in the y direction, which are these two components right here. And finally, we have a third direction, the z direction, and we, have, we can potentially have a stress there that points in some sort of direction other than in the z direction. And that means that we can represent it by an x component, a y component, and a z component. And here are the x component, the y component, and the z component along the axis pointing in the z direction. So here you can see we essentially have three sets of vectors for the three directions x, y, and z, giving us nine components that describe what happens in each of the three directions x, y, and z. Of course, we saw in the previous video that we can also uh, express it in terms of a, a being the letter we use for the, comp the components, we have nine components, and the first subscript is going from top to bottom. So that represents x direction, y direction, z direction, and then going to the right, that rep represents the three directions of the uh, 
whatever it is that we're measuring, stress or force or something, that points in the potential three directions going like this. So we have X, Y, and Z for the first, and then X, Y, and Z, X, Y, and Z, X, Y, and Z, X, Y, and Z, the three directions for the three particular things that we're measuring or that we're trying to represent, like stress. Stress is a good example in those three directions, X, Y, and Z. So hopefully this will give you a nice pictorial visualization of how to represent a tensor of rank 2, which is of course 1 beyond what a vector is, and therefore it has 3 times 3 or 9 components. That's what we mean by a dyad or a tensor of rank 2.